Well, 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 my friends, we made it once again to the most meaningful holiday ever invented by a greeting card company, Valentine's Day. I firmly believe that you don't need to resort to grandiose gestures to make the object of your desire swoon. I also believe that it's the simplest things that make the biggest impact. I'm also a strong believer that the way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. I hold that philosophy close to mind. That was last year. Suffice it to say, times have changed. Yet my belief that one of the best ways to anyone's heart is through their stomach has never wavered. Why would it? In fact, this past year, staying at home more has further strengthened that belief, and how. Just as a number two pencil, a pen, and a marker, a sharpie or any other kind of marker, are the most important implements when it comes to penning a written or musical ode to your bay. Akin to that, a fork, a spoon, and a knife. Three of the most important information when it comes to ripping up an edible ode for your bay. However you choose to make it work for you. And if you're stuck in a rut as to what to rip up for the love of your life or the love of your life elect this Valentine's Eve and day tomorrow, and I pray that you have at least one in either column, don't fret. Five once again brought along some front page backup. If you're looking to become the Lara Jean of your Green Beans Armandine, we're here to help. If you're looking to become the Peter Kavinsky of biscuits that'll make your date shout Harbinsky, we're here to help. By the way, if you don't get Harbinsky or the term Harbisky, where my variation of that term originated, you don't really get YouTube culture that much, do you? Harbisky! No sweat. Either way, just like the last one, this one goes out to all the souls I've ruled before. P.S. I'm still cooking. So, what do you say we roll up our sleeves, wash our hands, and get busy in the kitchen celebrating Valentine's Day thrift store rundown style? In style, on a budget. There, I got it proper this time. Thank you for joining us for another Valentine's Day edible extravaganza on the Thrift Store Rundown. But once again, it is my duty and privilege to help you rule those dames on a dime. Now that we're all spending a lot more time at home, part of that time can also be spent perfecting our prowess in the kitchen. And who better to help us than the people in Boston who know a thing or two about perfect prowess in the kitchen? America's Test Kitchen. Heating up people's love lives year round for over 20 years. No, they don't, you might say. Oh, but yes, they do. Why else would they publish these two special issue bookazines, a book magazine combo, as some people call them, designed for cooking for two, and both acquired for 50% off the price of a buck 99. What in the gamut? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and desserts like this chocolate pot de creme, which doesn't require a lot of that. Talk about a sweet ending, which could also serve has a sweet beginning. On the left, we have Best Ever Cookie for Two, which retails for $9.95 US and in Canada. And on the right, we have Dinner for Two, strictly Dinner for Two, like this classic lasagna. Same price stateside, but a buck more in Canada, $10.95. Both issues featuring 100 plus foolproof recipes with creative approaches to cooking for two. It's not just cutting the ingredient list in half. It's about nearly rethinking the entire procedure, ingredient, and equipment wise. Since cooking for your three should be an all day affair as far as I'm concerned, this is where we start you off with tonight. By the way, you know it's legit when the public television cast sports the top left cover of this book magazine. Chris, Jack, Adam, Bridget, and Julia, who I have to give a special shout out to. As you'll know, I went out in the snow to purchase their new cookbook, The Chicken Bible. 
And guess what? None other than THE Julia Collin Davidson not only liked that post on Instagram, but she also commented on it as well. The first time ever that she did that, I was as skinny as a schoolboy. You think I'm a schoolgirl? Mm-mm. I love you, Julia Collin Davidson! <clears throat> Enough fanboy. I have a duty to uphold. Anyway, some meals will be featured more prominently than others, mainly dinner. So consequently, these are the only two breakfast recipes featured in this special issue book scene, and really in the entire video as a whole. But both of them, marvelous choices. Buttermilk pancakes. We discovered the secrets to buttermilk pancakes that cook up fluffy with every batch. And morning glory muffins. You can't have too much of a good thing. For more glorious results, we trim the muffin back without trimming any flavor whatsoever. That's just how they roll. Two glorious options to start the day off right. As is the custom with every America's Test Kitchen and Cook's Country Special Issue Magazine or book, you get a little story here, describing the testing procedure, as well as notes from the test kitchen, ingredients, and equipment recommendations and preparation tips. Now, for the sweets, for the sweetie in your life. Cinnamon Struso Coffee Cake, Blueberry Crumble, Raspberry Nectarine Pie, New York Style Cheesecake, a number one contender for winning anyone's heart. Especially if they're a native New Yorker. A chocolate polo creme. As so triumphantly illustrated right here on the cover. Glazed lemon bun cakes. Also a nice choice. A chocolate raspberry tart. Ah, uh, a very fanciful way to rule the opposite of your desire. An easy apple galette. Another equally fabulous choice. Strawberry shortcakes, pecan tarts. You really can't do no wrong with America's Test Kitchen. And of course, the classic, the signature, the tiramisu. Trimming down this chilled Italian dessert started with choosing the baking vessel and ended in the fridge. This could end a very satisfying dinner, which could lead the, to the entire night ending in a private room that ideally has a mattress that fits too. This really does run the gamut here. As you can see the index of recipes here on the last page. And four more photographs at the top. How to cook for you plus one. Frustrated by recipes that produce more than enough food to keep you fed for a week? Tired of trying to figure out how to scale down a recipe so that it doesn't serve an army? For this innovative recipe collection, the editors and cooks at America's Test Kitchen decided to think big, but cook small, and revamp some of our best recipes to serve too. You'll find all manner of recipes here, from simple weeknight fare to more elegant special occasion dinners, as well as salads, soups, sides, baked goods, and desserts, and even, as I'll show you now in the next item, options for you vegetarians out there. We have here on the back weeknight roast chicken, slow cooker, easy pulled pork, vegetable and bean tostadas, and an easy apple galette as I just sold you. And yes, there's the cast, sporting the back cover as well. Christopher Kimball, Jack Bishop, Adam Reed, one of my main men, Adam Reed. Julia Cowan Davison, who I adore, and Bridget Lancaster. So let's get out dinner for two right here and again. I'm reserving this for the vegetarians out there. You know we got feelings for you guys too, so I wanted to throw you a bone, so to speak. Here we have stuffed acorn squash and quinoa cakes. And as with the first item, you get a Vinus Recipe Work Story, which describes the testy procedures. Notes from the test kitchen, all about Barley and quinoa, two of the main grains here in each dish. All with several other ingredients as well as equipment recommendations, suggestions, preparation tips, the works. 
Asian braised tofu with butternut squash and eggplant. Sounds like a very fancy bowl option now that food bowls are trending more than, well, uh, let's just say, uh, Aaron Rodgers and Saline Woodley engagement rumors. <laughs> Crispy tofu with sweet chili sauce. And finally, for the vegans out there and vegetarians, white bean and rosemary gratin with croutons. Five delicious vegetarian options for if you happen to swing that way. How to cook for you plus one. No kitchen math, no unwanted surprises, just perfect results every time you cook. That is their mantra, recipes that work. We've re-engineered more than 100, more, I think, of our best recipes to serve too. We discovered that scaling down a recipe isn't as simple as cutting the ingredients in half. Cooking times, temperatures, and equipment need to be adapted as well. We take the guest work out of cooking for two so that you can be sure that anything you want to make, from beef stew to spaghetti bolognese, will come out right and perfectly portioned every time. Whether you're thinking of chicken pot pie, spaghetti and turkey pesto meatballs, swordfish with avocado grapefruit salsa, or pot roasted steaks with root vegetables, this is gonna work for you good. Now, yes, I am focusing on romantic couples for this video and for this review, but it goes without saying that this is really well equipped for any two-person living situation, any two-person dynamic, whether it be family members, mother-son, mother-daughter, father-son, father-daughter, any two-person family dynamic, or same-sex platonic roommates. However it works for you, this is going to work out beautifully. And so will best ever cooking for two. I leave you now with a word of warning for if you don't buy these or don't put in the effort to cook at all. That warning comes to us from a woman who is mentioned in Christopher Kimball's opening preface for best ever cooking for two. The author of the first known cooking for two cookbook out there. A handbook for young housekeepers by author Janet McKenzie Hill. She says the following. Your energy and motive power are gone. This race must be renewed at once, or you will remain fit and inactive. Or, if the renewal be deferred for days, you will cease to live. Wow. And all the energy depletion habits between breakfast and lunch. That certainly applies to dinner and post-dinner activities that can be canceled outright if you don't put in the effort to whip up anything for the love of your life, for the love of your life, elect. If you want to do takeout, and you have your sweeties fine with that, that's on you. But you know what? You get bonus points and a lot of braggy fights if you put in the time and effort to make something from scratch for the love of your life, or the love of your life, elect. That, in my judgment, from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, is a fabulous way, two of them, to anyone's heart. Very, very, very romantic. And that leads us to Edible Enchantment Exhibit A. That's for the ladies today. We have perico, which is scrambled eggs with uh, onion and tomato. I'm gonna have some black beans. Some reina pepiada mix, which is avocado, chicken. That's it, and arepas. It's very important for me to give these girls a taste of Venezuela because that's me, you know, and the more I can cook, the more a girl is happy, the happier than I am. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> My first thought actually was, oh my gosh, I didn't brush my teeth. <laughs> but um, it's really sexy to see him in the kitchen. I, I was thrilled. Good morning, oh my gosh, this is He looks really, really good. He looks really, really good. I honestly don't care if you take a cue from Juan freaking Pablo. Gentlemen, letting your lady, or ladies in this case, see you spread your stuff in the kitchen makes you look really, really good too. And if I were you, I would invite her to cook alongside me as well. Pop in some tunes, pop over some bubbly, light some candles to make the evening and all morning count. You all have to all know Juan Pablo, figuring out how swell your Valentine's Day dining goes. Now it's time we channel our inner Hokey Carmichael when it comes to being Cupid's disciple. 
and meet a woman who literally pours her hearts, and I mean hearts, not just hot. You'll see why shortly. And so, into every meal she cooks, whether they take 30 minutes or more or less. I told you that 2021 would be Wake's always comeback year on TSR, and I meant it. You'll recall last year I reviewed her Everyday Magazine from February 2009. This is the 9 year follow-up, February 2018. And as was the case with the two America's Test Kitchen book scenes in the back, this was purchased for 50% off its sticker price, and also 50 cents less, a buck 49. How about that for secondhand bliss for your sweetie? Hit refresh. Friends up your week like dinners. Organize your space. Which reminds me, I'm going to show you some great Valentine's Day gift ideas on a budget. Which are all in pink. Pretty in pink. Finally, skip the restaurant. Make Rachel's pasta dishes for your Valentine. Before we get to the primo pasta, we first start off with a letter from Rachel. Now that's refreshing. Her letter. Details all that you're gonna get with this issue, including John's amazing new cocktail. That would be a husband, John Cusy Manos, Kiss from a Rose, Q Seal. Delicious, and it will make you blush. And yes, blush is the key word here for another chapter, which I will show you. Again, we're gonna show you some great Valentine's Day gift ideas that are all colored blush that are guaranteed to make your sweetie pie. Bless in gratitude. I wish I would cue seal here, Rachel, but uh, if I did, well, content ID would apply, or I'd get a copyright strike. And I don't need any more of those that I already have. Of course, a great backup dessert, if you can't rip up dessert from scratch, well, that would be chocolate. Brown, white, pink, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate, strawberry scented flavored chocolate, your choice. By the way, you cannot have too much chocolate. <laughs> now on the cocktail. This is John's Kiss from a Rose. John is the mythologist in the family. That would be the family of him, Rachel, and their dog, Isabu. For Valentine's Day, he stirs up a drink that's fittingly romantic. Let's move on to some hearty meals. These cute Valentine's Day recipe ideas will give you all the feels. Yes, every single recipe in this section has ingredients that are shaped like a heart. And are the prime star of those dishes, like this roasted beet salad with beets cupped into shapes of hearts. How cute is that? You can't beat a hot shaped beet. Or how about a hearty chicken soup? How about some cranberry cinnamon rolls shaped like hearts? And pizza with pepperoni sprinkled on top that looks like, you guessed it. And now, you know what it's time for? Hi there, I'm Rachel Ray and I make 30 minute meals. That means in the time it takes you to watch this program, I'll have made a delicious and healthy meal from start to finish. Oh heck yeah! Valentine's Day makes me think of love! And so does pasta. This type of year, I like to picture Lady in the Tramp sharing a big bowl of spaghetti in the moonlight. Spaghetti is love. Get twirling by Rachel Ray. If you love a pasta lover, or if you are a pasta lover, make all of these dishes and celebrate Valentine's Day over and over again. Oh heck yeah. These are 30 minute meals that anyone can really dig. Straw and hay with spinach sauce and pine nuts. By the way, the straw and hay refers to the two different types of fettuccine used in this recipe. Regular fettuccine and spinach fettuccine. Just make sure you're not serving it up to an Italian mob boss who finds it hogwash that you're serving up straw and hay. Because if that's the scenario... <laughs> well... You could have worse problems. And by worse problems, I mean contracts out on your life! Okay, I kid, I kid. Moving on, uh, what else is there? Carbonara with saffron and shrimp 
which is circled, by the way. And that circle indicates that it's definitely a highlight recipe for the person or couple that previously owned this issue. So you know it's definitely got some use. My Valentine John's favorite pasta is carbonara, so I know which one of these recipes I'm making for him. Duly noted, Rachel. By the way, a bouquet of salami? How they wait so way ask of you. Pasta with greens, eggs, and ham? That's right, Dr. Seuss is channeling his own Cupid. Or the very least, Rachel Ray is making him do so in spirit. <laughs> Papa Deli with brown butter, meat sauce, and crispy sage. Ziti with sweet but hot sauce, and eggplant with sausage. Which is also circled, by the way. Meat lover sauce with pacchieri or rigatoni. Ali Oreo with lemon and pecorino breadcrumbs. If there's a heaven, my first meal will be a bowl of Ali Oreo with extra anchovy shared with my grandpa Emmanuel. Also, fowl pasta with mushroom ragu and walnuts. Fowl is a type of grain, by the way. Rigatoni with bacon, onion, and balsamic vinegar. Mesa rigatoni alla matriciana amodana. I think I got that fairly on spot. Finally, buttermilk bucatini with turkey ragu and herb breadcrumbs. How about those for some scrumptious pasta dishes for your amore? Now on to Valentine's Day gift ideas. Bless much? To add a little cool to your space, try the softest, edgiest color around. A barely there shade of pink that goes with, well, pretty much everything. This is a collection of Valentine's Day themed gifts, um, all assembled by Danielle Blundell. We got headphones, we got some booties, a plus pillow, we got a chair here. By the way, when I say they're on a budget, I mean relatively. For uh, these are going to be within the hundreds of bucks range, but if you can splurge, well then do, because they all look good. Especially the, uh, this bottle of rosé right here. Drink pink. Chateau de Esclan, Whispering Angel Wells. Chateau de Esclan's Whispering Angel Rose costs 22 bucks for a 750 milliliter bottle. It's been its ideal match in this tinted plum and punch pink stemless wine glass, which you can buy for 35 bucks, and that would be for a pair off of plumandpunch.com. Now that is quite a combination that would make anybody bust, especially if you're in it and you knew this was coming. Nation. Hello, Roses and Rose. The ideal trick while you're watching Lauren Zima Gus all about the Bachelor Bachelor on him team tonight's YouTube channel. Um, of course, she is dating Chris Harrison. How about that? They're very professional in keeping things uh, professional on camera, making no mention of the fact that they're officially an item. And the number one item of disgusted in Bachelor Nation. Those who stand Chris Harrison with all their heart. One more pink or rosé or blush themed gift to share with you here. In the sweet new love section presented by Tips and Trends. Set the mood this Valentine's Day with the Pink Voyage Ultra Sonic Aroma Diffuser and Love More Essential Oil. Who knows what kind of connections they could inspire. Bundle together for $29.99 and save. This is a definitely inspired discount code LOVE14 at elia.com E-L-L-I-A dot com And also, honorable mention, that would be Mountain Ridges Orange Blossom Honey. For your honey! Naturally healthy. 100% honey, and it's sure to deliver a sweet, romantic, and aromatic experience. Just so on desserts and life it up coffee and tea with unique orange citrus notes from orange blossom flowers. Naturally healthy mountain ridge honey dot com for the honey in your life. And not the honey boo boo. Trust me. There is no more worse nickname for a sweetheart of any kind other than honey boo boo. I'm not even going to ask if you know why. You should know that by now. Curse TLC. That is just a small sampling of the other deliciousness you're going to enjoy 
out of this enjoyable nine-year follow-up to the issue I previously reviewed last year. And it further strengthens my belief that a great meal and one of the greatest ways to anyone's heart is never more than 30 minutes away. And that leads us to Edible Enchantment Exhibit B. Cooking for two does not have to be limited to just courting couples. One of the best examples of the magic that this activity can bring is inviting a friend over to share an afternoon in front of the stove, laughing and chatting while enjoying your jointly homemade delicacies. There's no better way to be the Andrew Goad of mastering one of the best hands-on approaches to bonding for young and old. Five ingredients, four easy, elegant, and irresistible recipes with three more pantry staples? Maybe it does sound too easy to create one great meal. Well, at the very least, that's the warty proposition of Claire Robinson, author and host of the Five Ingredient Fits cookbook you see before you, and the TV show of the same name, respectively. She's also the host of Fruit Up Book Challenge. Well, Claire. It's just an awful we can't refuse, because if it is, and if it works... Otherwise, if it fails, then I'm sending Vito after you. Okay, I can't. Sorry, I'm just on a high after that Italian mob boss bit. Anyway, let's dive deep into this Grand Central Life and Style publication, which I acquired off of Amazon for 5 bucks and 38 cents plus an additional 81 cents tax. So six nineteen in total. And I gotta say, Stephen Morello, you drive a hard bargain here too. Any man out there would be more than happy and more than willing to take a few tips on how to woo the dames on a dime from this southern bohemian bell. I don't know if your judgment differs, but Claire Robinson looks smoking. Stephen Morello, by the way, is one of two photographers for this cookbook. Let's get started. Ribeye steaks or poivre. That means all covered with pepper. The five main fresh ingredients called for in this recipe are ribeye steaks, not that surprising, brandy, heavy cream, sherry vinegar, and butter. Steak or poivre. Well, what about pepper? That should be a main ingredient here. Hello, or poivre is pepper. Two tablespoons in this instance of coarsely cracked black pepper. As a matter of fact, here's fault number one. Yeah, does that look like five ingredients to you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ingredients, one of them being disregarded for being the main ingredient. Black pepper. Claire, looks like you're taking some sudden liberties. Like Michael Simon is. If you don't recall, a little while back, I reviewed his 5 and 5 cookbook, which itself takes some liberties as well. Anyway, continuing. Roasted asparagus with balsamic ground butter. The five main ingredients called for here, asparagus, olive oil, butter, balsamic vinegar, and ricotta salana. But this here says six ingredients, and this yields four servings. Hmm. Five ingredient fix. Well, in terms of quantity, this doesn't sound particularly accurate, Claire. Which porcini mushroom risotto? The ingredient list here calls for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Salt and black pepper to taste right here. The five fresh ingredients here, if you want to call them fresh ingredients, the five keystone ingredients, dried porcini mushrooms, butter, arborio rice, fried fine, pecorino, romano cheese. Hmm. By the way, for every recipe in here, you get what makes this recipe really sing. One thing Claire knows how to do well besides cook is sing her own phrases. Quite literally, in this context, I don't know if she sings really well. What to toss it if you have it? She says ingredient substitutions. If you're out of some certain guidepost ingredients called for in some of the recipes. Most of them yield four, some serve six, eight, ten, or a dozen. Yet I'm not really impressed in her promising that 
all of these ingredients will require just one sort of a baker's dozen worth of ingredients. Hmm. One final recipe, chocolate polar cream with cherry whip. How about that? Similar to the one uh, that I covered in ATK Best Ever Cookie for Two at the beginning of the show. That's your cherry whip. Five keystone ingredients. Bittersweet chocolate, heavy cream, sugar, eggs, and cherry preserves. Now this requires five ingredients, plus a special piece of equipment, a nine-inch removable bottom fluted tot pan. So you go to the cooking supply store, and those are relatively easy to find. What makes this recipe really sane, and will have your date sitting tonight? The beauty of custards is that they normally don't have any flour, so the texture is silky smooth from the eggs and cream. Make sure the cream is very hot when being added to the chocolate and keep stirring until smooth when there are no longer any visible chocolate bits. Want to toss it if you have it? Well, chocolate can be paired with many flavors. The addition of a little liqueur, ooh la la, always essential to have on hand if you have that particular spirit, pun intended. Spices or coffee brings out even more chocolate flavor. Try adding one teaspoon of instant espresso powder, another essential to have on hand, if you have some, to the hot cream. It will add even more depth and richness to the polar de cream. These four recipes here are based off of a menu called Sewing Off, which really amounts to a Valentine's Day dinner, but this can also easily come in handy for sewing off to your boss, or to a really good friend, or to somebody in your family. Uh, this definitely is more akin to a Valentine's Day meal, which is why I chosen the Solos recipes in that particular menu here. But you see plenty more menus here in this menu ideas for memorable meals section. Or at least you're about to see them now. Let me zoom in here. And there are plenty of them. Um, mostly all of them include four recipes. Um, a couple of them involve five, and a couple of them involve three. You choose what works for you. For the kid and everyone, a bountiful brunch, a summer get-together when spring has sprung. And you know what? During this time, you can never have too much premature spring in your life. Castle Friday night. Well, that would work too. Easy white pizza, zucchini ribbon salad, millionaire's shortbread if you want million dollar results. With the love of your life or the love of your life left, I would consider that. Five ingredient fix? Not that accurate, Claire. So you got some faults here. But I will say, by and large, judging from the delicious looking photographs, and those of the food too, and the recipes themselves, judging from ease of use to prep and serve, out of the quality of the photographs, the quantity, the quality of the recipes, and so on and so forth, I'd say this is a good cookbook. Yes, 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 Anne Burrell and Publicist Weekly are raving about this, but I have to say, Claire, while that praise is otherwise somewhat earned, the execution of this proposition is definitely flawed. But that won't stop me from recommending this cookbook and saying to you that this is one that nobody can refuse. For the record, I did check, and Claire Robinson is as single as a Pringle. And gentlemen, you know what that means! Gentlemen, time for the hunt! <laughs> ah, dear diary, I'm scared of the hunt! And that leads us to our third and final edible enchantment, Exhibit C. Grilled, roasted, a nice slaw. When I say make an entire day out of bonding with your bay over capital cuisine, I mean it. Shopping with your love, whether at a farmer's market such as this, or at a regular grocery store to get the ingredients can also be a great time to bond. That also goes for heading to a kitchen supply store or decoration store to pick up some special equipment or dining room decor for later in the day. You are, after all, the James Beard of Getty Revered, and should be well on your way to earning much more than just lots of compliments. Before I tie a bow on this, let's do a comparison between ATK and Food Network for just a hot minute. With America's Test Kitchen, you become much more actively involved and invested in the cooking and mise en place process. And while the term recipes at work is highly subjective these days, I grew up watching America's Test Kitchen, 
I have a strong, firm faith and belief in what they do. Hello, Bridget and Julia and Jack and Adam interacting with me on social media has reinstated that belief. If not, it firmed it even more so. They are not just stuff in stir recipes, like Food Network offers most of the time that take 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or even less. So, you're going to have to develop some good time management skills and a lot of patience while assembling recipes from America's Test Kitchen. In the end, whether you choose to go to America's Test Kitchen or Food Network Bout, it's a personal preference. It's how you choose to be the Janelle Paris of making sure that your chances of smooching with your sweetie tonight do not perish. Having said that, Claire Robinson, not only is she a faulty proposition, an issue with me of a five ingredient fix approach being the way to go, but also, failure to acknowledge your fans, the audience, not saying thank you to the fans, doesn't sit well with me either. And the penalty for those who do not do such a thing here at TSR is a half clap deduction. So, other than those two discrepancies, Claire, I'd say you put forth a deliciously valiant effort. And I awarded four and a half out of five claps. While the rest of these items here, ATK and Rachel Ray Every Day on all five claps. I find no faults, no discrepancies in any of these items here. Grand total, 19 and a half out of a possible score of 20 claps. I defy you to tell me right now that anyone would not fall in love with you because of what you ripped up out of any of these cookbooks, magazines, whatever you want to call them, bookazines, in the case of America's Test Kitchen. Whatever they may be to you, they're to me primo and prime time and premier examples of how to rule your dame on a dime in the kitchen. Hey, if what for one person who I could speak for but can no longer speak for himself. Old Dally's Hog Green. I brought him up last week and a few weeks ago. He was the man that won my mother's heart by making fish head soup. Although he's no longer here to speak for himself, tragically he passed away due to undisclosed causes at the age of 50 and I covered that last week. I know that cooking to win somebody's heart worked for him. And if it worked for him, it can definitely work for you too. And I know that someday it'll work for me. For one day, whenever I meet my sweetie. Although, I would definitely pass up fish head of soup and give it that opportunity. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. Unless ATK has their own more appealing version of fish head soup, I'll pass on that. I'm sure my Valentine's Day will go swimmingly with that um, little omission. But, as I stated last year, I'll state again this year. By no means is cooking just a form of seduction of Valentine's Day. No, it's one of the most fun, hands-on, and interactive ways to show a special kind of love to friends and family. So if you can, have a small group of friends and family over, make them a great Valentine's Day meal, buy them some chocolates, buy them some edible treats, do whatever you gotta do, and show those guys how much you really love them. And if by some chance you look up tonight, and somebody in spirit who is no longer with us says to you that what you whipped up for breakfast, lunch, or dinner on Valentine's Eve or Valentine's Day tomorrow received rage from your family, friends, or your crush, or your paramour, or your spouse, whoever, make sure to tell them thank you and I love you. I will see you guys tomorrow night for my couple's game night video. Until then, I'll catch you on the thrift side. Have a great Valentine's Eve tonight. Take care, thank you, and good night.